Hey there guys, this is Flamesaron aka YouTube Sasuke, and this is the Tales of Fandom Volume 2 Final Thought video. Now, like I've said before with Tales of Fandom Volume 1, this game I kind of look at as being sort of like a thank you to, for being a Tales fan. But this one is kind of different. I'm actually recording this one differently too, just because of the way it was designed. I'm kind of pulling a DW Terminator kind of thing where I just record gameplay footage and then I just record over it, but I'm not even watching the video right now. I'm just recording my own dialogue. But, yeah, I feel as though this game was sort of made as sort of like a, a thank you to Tales fans, you know, hence the name Fandom. And since there was a Volume 1, there was obviously going to be a Volume 2. I and mean, that's kind of the way volumes work. If there, there are big plans to, like, do, like, a big collection. And who knows, maybe they'll make a Tales of Fandom Volume 3 someday. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised if they're going to announce it, you know, at the next Tales Festival. But anyway, this one wasn't actually as good as the original. For a few reasons. One, there weren't really that many f fun, I say, games. Besides this little shooting one, this is actually pretty fun. And some weird timing game. It was just supposed to be like a simulation of a Tales battle with timing instead. That's okay, I guess, but it's not really that fun, and you don't really gain anything from it besides probably extra points or something. I mean, you can get different costumes for the Tails characters. Uh, I mean, they they've got like a school uniform kind of thing for you know the Tails of the Abyss people, and they've got like a nurse outfit for Colette and a doctor's outfit for outfit, outfit, a doctor's outfit for Kratos and some other stuff. But nothing really um, that cool. Now, as far as the story goes, uh, yeah, it takes place during different time periods and like of the three games, you know, Fantasia, Symphonia, and Abyss. I have no idea why they just chose those three instead of including all the Tales games. I guess maybe I don't know. Maybe they're fan favorites or something. I mean, that could be true. I mean, I don't see why they just didn't include everyone. And just kind of been like been a, been a fandom thing in the sense of tales, and not just the fan favorites of tales. But you know, that's just the way I feel. And uh, anyway, the story goes, you know, they, there's like a rift in time or like a break in time. They all get sucked into this like world. But it's kind of weird. That's basically the story. I haven't played enough of the three star modes to really see if um to see if like the characters like come across each other and I decided to make this one because I honestly don't plan on playing the game that much and so I figured I should just go ahead and get this final thought over with and I know you guys are probably thinking but Tosuke you always finish a Tales game before you do a final thought of it not necessarily and you know it depends on you know the game itself and you know, the footage itself might be confusing anyway, because I'll probably be showing, like, footage of different versions depending on what game it is and what it has to offer. But anyway, from what I've seen in the story, it kind of just starts off and different things. And the Fantasia one is the one that actually introduced the whole timing game. I think it's called Just Timing or something like that. Arche actually does a timing thing. But I don't really... It's just I think it's just kind of there to you know, introduce the whole thing. I mean, there are other stories. I believe there's a um, story in this one talking about the times, like Aaron Kratos' time, where it's Kratos, you, and Mythos, and Martell. I think that's one of the time periods where they're kind of explaining things about what happened in that time. Just to sort of appease some of the fans who really wanted to see, uh, you know, that version of that little storyline of the game kind of being told. Because I know a lot of Tales fans, especially those on the, on the BBS, really wanted to see, like, how things happen with, like, the whole Kratos and, and Ewan thing. But, you know. Of course, you know, the Tales series isn't exactly like that, I don't think. And there's also one for Tales of the Abyss kind of explaining Tyr as a novice soldier because, you know, like... You know, you'll probably learn once my podcast talks about it, and I do. The, and well, I already did the final thought, but you know uh, that you know pretty much everyone, and like, Abyss is very military-like, 
not I was gonna say military base, but that's not really true. Like a lot of the characters like Jade, Annis, and Tyr, really those three, I guess. And you know, kind of Ash too, they're all soldiers in a way. Like Ash is kinda just a yeah, he's a general, so he's pretty much a soldier and they all wear their uniforms too, which I think is kinda funny. But you know, kind of talks about Tyr being a young soldier. You know, they even made like a little, little avatar, a little mini avatar for her, like a little picture, and kind of explaining like you know, Van as a te as training her, and you know, I think even Jade and Peony the Ninth also have a thing going on. Not really sure. I haven't played enough of the game. I don't even remember how things go. But uh, another thing, you know. Besides the story, I feel like another point of this game was to sort of take a popular uh, form of media in Japan and then make it and then bring the Tales series to it or make a Tales game kind of in that format. Uh, that's just my opinion because, you know, you know, a popular form of entertainment in Japan besides anime, manga, and video games are, vi it, or rather is, visual novels. You know, Fate Stay Night, Fortune Arterial... Uh, little busters, you know, all that kind of stuff. And of course, there's anime and video games and manga that get based off of these visual novels. Fate Stay Night being probably one of the more popular ones. And then there are also visual novels based on these um, series, like, you know, Strawberry Panic is another one. And so I feel like, you know, Tales Fandom Volume 2 is supposed to be the what if scenario of what if. You know, the Tales series was a visual novel. And I say that because, one, you know, the the main, um, the story mode, if you will, of this game is just, you know, the big text thing, and there are a few choices here and there. I don't think it's that involved, so going through it probably wouldn't be that hard. But, you know, it's really, you know, just the equivalent to a visual novel. Where it's just literally just text and voiceovers and, you know, the, those little avatar people showing up with their different emotions and the timing game probably shows up every now and then there's probably some other mini games that probably show up or I don't really know I doubt it but uh you're probably thinking well why not play well I mean one it's an imported game and it's definitely not coming out in English I can tell you that right now unless it's like an import title with you know translation with it which if they did that then I would probably give it a try because then I could just read the text but uh you know as much as I love the Japanese language I can only listen to it for so long before you know I, I just get kind of tired of listening to it especially c considering I can't understand it if I could understand it that would change things a little bit but the other reason why I think this game is supposed to be like you know a what if Tales visual novels because of the art style. The art style of the game, while you know you can tell it's the characters, they're drawn like the characters, the actual art style itself of the characters is kind of different than what we're used to. It's not Kosuke Fujishima from what I can tell, and it's not Mitsumi Iromata either from what I can tell because it doesn't look shoujo enough. It's actually some different kind of style. And I remember back, you know, a long time ago, they had, um, on the website, they had, like, they had some drawings, and some characters look good, but some characters just look bad. And then, like, a while later on, they changed it to where, to make the characters, you know, look better. To where they didn't look as bad. I think some characters were left alone. But, you know, some characters look, look good, some don't. Yeah. Like, uh, Cress, for example, I think he could probably use a little bit touching. I feel like his eyes are too dark. I don't know. Uh, probably have to, I haven't looked at him in a while. Probably after I watch the video, or maybe I can go to the website and, you know, look him up and see, you know, how he looks compared to other things. But, you know, I don't really know what else I can say about this game, to be honest. Um... The footage I did was 15 minutes, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kind of talk for as long as I can. And I don't want to just have, like, pure silence. But, um, as far as what I did enjoy, um, not much. I mean, the the shooting game, that's actually kind of fun. And I don't know if it actually has an end or not. Um, 
um, it kind of just keeps going and going and going with like different levels where you fight harder monsters and you're trying to protect Mew. You get to choose between Cress, Lloyd, and Luke, and I usually just play as Luke because he's my favorite out of the three, and he is one of my favorite characters, and Abyss is one of my favorite Tales games, kind of, in general. I think it's right under Eternia, but, um, anywho, that's a pretty fun mini game to play. My only problem with it is that this game, uh, to beat the levels, it has some sort of, like, criteria, you know? Some sort of like criteria system, like, oh, you're supposed to kill, you know, this amount of enemies in order to advance to the next stage. And when you reach that criteria, the whole level just stops. A curtain comes down because the whole layout is like based on a stage. And the curtain comes up and you do the next level, you know. I feel like it's kind of annoying. And I kind of wish that, you know, the game would just like not do that and kind of just let me kill all the enemies. Because sometimes. You beat a level, but there's still enemies left on the field that you need to kill, and that's kind of annoying. And so I kind of had hoped that they would just like, oh, just kill all the enemies and then move on. I think that would have been pretty cool, personally. But that's what I—that's how I would have designed it. For those of you who haven't played either games and kind of want to know want to know what I'm talking about when I say, you know, you know, many games weren't as good. Or, well, for one thing, I mean the. Obviously, they didn't carry over the mini games from Fandom Volume One and whatnot. I mean, the whole story-based idea behind making, you know, the games behind the games behind the story mode, quote unquote. You know, they're similar, but you know, I remember the ones in, Fant in Fandom Volume One being a little bit better. I mean, yeah, there were only three Tales games: Fantasia, Destiny, and Eternia. But, you know, it, the stories were a little, you know, I guess kind of better. I mean, it almost seemed like, you know, the Tales worlds were all kind of connected. Like, one thing I remember was um, with Lilith, I remember how she, um, like, her, her story was like, Part of it was like sort of like, you know, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like how she appeared in Eternia, like it kind of explained how she got there. And, you know, you had to like sort of play this like cooking mini game. It was more of like a matching kind of thing, I believe. I had an FAQ to help me out with it, but it was still pretty fun. And then there was like a cooking test thing where you had to answer questions. You know, it was actually pretty good. You know, it was pretty fun. And I don't remember what happened in the other ones. Oh, I remember with the, uh, there was this other character, had an original character in it, um, Pramula. Um, and her story, you know, she was a student of, you know, Minch University, and so Kiel was there. And that was, you know, something pretty interesting. Anyway. And I remember that one. That one had a little bit of a guessing game to it. But anyway, uh, before I run out of time, the stuff that was missing in... That was missing in Volume 1 was... Um, let's see. Uh, there was a Tetris game. That was pretty fun, which they probably could have carried over. There was a Skip Maker. That was fun. You know, Honestly, I don't see why they didn't include that one. You know, even if it was just three Tales games, they still could have made something that was fun. And the English lettering would have been better, and they probably ha could have had more space to record stuff. Uh, that's really all the stuff I could remember. Um, that's really all I can think of, and I'm... Uh, but overall, this game, you know, was okay, I suppose. I mean, the only thing that kind of came good out of it was, um, um, you know, these little, the Tales of My Shuffle cards that I got, and, um, you know, the DVD, and I don't even remember what else they came with. But the cards was really the only thing that really kind of made the whole pre-ordering worthwhile. So that's really it. So I guess I will see you guys later. This is Flames Ronnie K. YouTube Sasuke signing out.
Have a nice day. Goodbye.